Hello everyone and welcome to Thoro Newspaper Analysis by Law Seekho. So today we have an editorial for our discussion which has been taken from the Hindu newspaper. The title of today's editorial is Demolishing the Rule of Law. So this talks basically about the right to be uh, you know protected from being evicted and what are the constitutional remedies that are available in this regard. Then we have the news updates that are important for a prelims exam and then we'll be concluding with the legal news for the day. But before we begin with today's session, let me quickly give you a brief as to what exactly is this newspaper analysis. So Law Seco brings this newspaper analysis specially for the judiciary aspirants at present because this is an all-encompassing video within just 10 minutes that will be including the most important editorials that are important for our legal you know, perspective as well as for our social legal development of mindset. These are also superbly important for writing essays as well. Now, the second segment that talks about the news updates talks about the important news points, for example, the new awards, appointments, new uh, any kind of new development, legal development for that matter that has taken place or a legal appointment for that matter that has taken place and that can be crucially asked in the prelims exam. And finally, we have the legal news for the day, which has the important case laws for the day and that will be sharing over here. So all of this bunch of information you can get right away at this particular video within just 10 minutes. So definitely it is a win-win situation for all of us. With this, let's start the discussion for the first and the only editorial for today that is about demolishing the rule of law. Let's quickly understand as to why this entire topic is into discussion. So here on 21st April, it witnessed a fleet of bulldozers demolishing the houses, small shops and the entrance gate of a mosque. Now, while the Supreme Court immediately ordered that a status quo be maintained, the bulldozers continued demolishing buildings even after an hour had passed from the order. Here, before we begin a deeper discussion about this entire topic, two things we need to understand are, firstly, the rule of law. So here, when we talk about the rule of law, by that we simply mean that nothing and no one is above the law and the law shall be supreme. This has been taken from the concept of A.V. Dicey and rule of law is from the British origin. So always please keep that in mind. Second thing that we need to understand here is that if Supreme Court order an immediate maintenance of status quo, so what do we actually understand by the maintenance of status quo? Here we would say that it is that whatever is the situation shall be left to be however it is, which means that nothing shall be changed either to the positive or to the negative. So basically, the way it is, to let things the way it is, they are. So here, even after Supreme Court had immediately ordered the status quo, still the bulldozers continued demolishing the buildings even after an hour of that passage. Now, this is in retaliation of the communal flare-ups that happened due to the Ram Navmi processions. So the act was justified as illegal encroachment and the same speaks volumes about the undermining of the rule of law. Now, let's understand about a deeper thing into this entire discussion. So a statement made by the NDMC about illegal encroachment is only a legal smokescreen. Basically, here, the Delhi Economic Survey of 2008-9 states that only 24% of the people in the city lived in the planned colonies and the rest entire population were informal and they lived in unplanned colonies in the form of Jhopalpattis or Jhopris that we call so in the local language. Now, the draft master plan of Delhi for 2041 recognized these informal communities as high density mixed use hubs which provide affordable housing options. Now, as we know, that even the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and other you know plans that are brought by the government are definitely working in enhancing and increasing and making it better in, in, with regard to the standard of living for the people, especially when it comes to the housing of the people. But still, here, a clear example is there in front of our eyes that still here, great or, you know, even more than 80, uh, 70 to 80% of the population of Delhi still lives in these kinds of areas. Now, both Delhi Municipal Corporation Act of 1957, as well as the DDA, that is the Delhi Development Act 1957, make it abundantly clear that no authority can demolish a permanent house. Now, there are two conditions to that without firstly issuing, so without issuing firstly an advance notice to the occupants of the said house, and secondly, without giving the occupants of the said house a chance to be heard. Here, in the case of Ajay Makan versus uh, Shakur Basti, the Supreme Court held that proper rehabilitation had to be provided before eviction, and no one would be evicted without conducting a survey and consulting the general population. So definitely, such decisions cannot be reckless, one way, and even arbitrary. Now, this was made to safeguard the interest of the slum dwellers, right to city and adequate housing as per the international law as well. 
Now, these were further upheld in the case of Sudama Singh versus Government of India in the year 2010. Now, the practice of bulldozer state dispenses vengeful justice of the majority upon the minority. And definitely, that is not something that is encouraged in a country as huge as a democracy like India. Now, the state machinery has used retributive action in the guise of legality and has arbitrarily imposed punitive measures on the entire neighborhood. So basically here what we have done that we have only tried to cover up this entire uh, entire action in the name of legality, but in reality is nothing but just arbitrary action of the state. And that is why just maybe to give one lesson, it has actually given punishment to the entire neighborhood, which definitely is not encouraged. Now let's see what do we have for the news updates that are important for a prelims exam. Firstly, Macron set to lead France again. So in a result that defied modern president, Emmanuel Macron was on April 24th re-elected as the president of France. So what is important for us over here is that still the president of France is Emmanuel Macron. Second, structural biologist Vijayan passed away. So in Thiruvananthapuram, molecular biophysicist and structural biologist Professor Maman Ramana Vijayan passed away in Bengaluru on Sunday, said the Indian National Science Academy. He was 80 years old and was former president of the INSA during 2008 to 10. Thirdly, Prime Minister receives Lata Mangeshkar Award. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday was honored with the Lata Dinanath Mangeshkar Award and remembered the iconic singer as an artist who was an integral part of nation building. Modi, also who regard, who's regarded her as his elder sister, is the first recipient of the award. Fourthly, Jehan finishes second in sprint race. So India's Jehan Daruwala finished a creditable second in the sprint race of Formula 2 championships in Imola. The 23-year-old who started uh, third rocketed off to the line to slot into second behind Marcus Armstrong, who took the lead after sprint race. Pole sighter Logan Sargent made a tardy get get getaway and dropped to fifth on Saturday. Fifthly, new vice chairperson of Niti Aayog, Dr. Rajiv Kumar, is the vice chairperson or chairman of Niti Aayog in the rank and status of a cabinet minister. He also serves as the chancellor of Gokhale Institute of Politics and Economics, Pune, and the chairman of the board of governors of the Giri Institute of Development Studies, Lucknow. On this note, also please remember that uh, the prime minister of the country, that is the prime minister of India, is the ex-official chairman of the Niti Aayog. So right now, this position is being held by Narendra Modi. Sixth, Tanuvas uh, tops list in veterinary university. So the Tamil Nadu Veterinary and Animal Sciences University has been ranked first among the 15 states veterinary science vet universities in India by the Indian Council of Agricultural Research in the recent list rank by Mr. Ten Singh said the ranking would give a weightage to Tanuvas to get funds from the National Livestock Project, NABARD and other government projects as well. Seventh, Maldives bans India out camping. So amid the India Out campaign that has been rolling Maldives for months, its president Ibrahim Mohamed Soli on Thursday issued a decree banning protests against the country, citing a threat to national security. Eight, Earth Day that was there on 22nd April. So it was on uh, Earth Day that was on 22nd April that is widely recognized as the largest secular observance in the world, marked by more than a billion people every year as a delay of action to change human behavior and create global, national and local policy changes. So the theme for Earth Day 2022 is invest in our planet, calling for businesses to shift towards sustainable practices. Ninthly, we have the E2025 initiative for halting malaria. This is an important one. So on April 21st, 2021, ahead of the World Malaria Day, WHO, that is the World Health Organization, launched the E2025 initiative to halt the transmission of malaria in 25 identified countries by 2025. And tenth, on 10th number, we have Prime Minister Modi releases coin stamp on Guru Tegh Bahadur's 400th uh, Prakash Pura. So it, uh, recently, uh, the Prime Minister has released a commemorative coin and a postage stamp to mark the 400th anniversary of Guru Tegh Bahadur, who was the ninth Sikh Guru, while addressing the nation from the historic Red Fort to mark the celebrations. Now let's see what do we have for a legal news and update. Firstly, the accused cannot claim blanket exemption from personal appearance in cases under section 138 of the negotiable instrument act says the supreme court in the case of mahesh kumar kejriwal versus bhanuj jindal secondly the easement right cannot be created by parties themselves it has to be proved according to the act 
according to the Madras High Court in the case of Nallamal and another versus Sengora, Gondar and others. So the Madras High Court has held that the easement right cannot be just created by the act of the parties themselves without any recital in the documents. The easement right is a statutory right and therefore has to be proved in a manner known to law. Thirdly, only date of submission of charge sheet is relevant for default bail and not the date of preparation according to the Odisha High Court in the case of Pramesh Pradhan at Rani and another versus state of Odisha. So the Odisha High Court has held that here the date of submission of the charge sheet is not is the only relevant date and that should be considered while granting bail uh, default bail under section 167 clause 2 of CRPC and the date of preparation of the charge sheet is immaterial unless it is produced before the court on the same day. So this was all for the day. We hope you liked the session. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and you may also subscribe to this channel for such more updates. Also, if you wish to download the PDF of today's slides, you can join our Telegram channel. The link is there in the description box below or you can scan this QR code that you can see on your screens right now. Also, you may follow us on our official Instagram channels for Judiciary, Clackprep, VGCnet, etc. Thank you so much.